Hail Heroes! This video is going to be exploring the tile stack system and how tile placement works in Cormac McCart on the other side of midnight. A scenario in its description will tell you what tiles to collect to form the tile stack. You will then get those tiles and shuffle them together. The tiles are double sided with a thinning veil on one side and the artwork for the tiles on the other. Now some tiles are said to be event tiles. They will have a narrative description in the scenario book, ordinarily describing a situation or a fix that Cormac gets himself into, or perhaps presenting enemies that he may have to confront, or of course, both. Then, of course, there are tiles which are not mentioned as event tiles. When Cormac explores those tiles, he rolls on the fate table using two dice in what is called a fate roll. In solo, Cormac can re-roll one of the results should he find it less than desirable. So, if Cormac generates his actions at the start of the round and has, in this instance, generated three combats and three interact results, he can now begin to explore. As detailed in another video, it costs any action to begin to explore. Cormac begins his round by exploring the tile he's in, making a search too to see if there's any treasure to be had. Cormac has discovered some treasure, so he draws a card. He's found a lock pick, and he thinks that that will be a useful item, so he tucks that away. As a result of the successful search, Cormac will place a search token in the zone that he occupies. And feeling courageous, Cormac then spends a combat so that he still has an equal number of combat and interact for whatever he may confront in the future to move a zone. He's picked this direction to travel in. He could have chosen any of the other directions from this zone and he has come in from the arch. He's found a corridor. So we'll place the hallway here and he walks into the hallway. Cormac then rolls his two dice for his fate roll, because the hall is not an event tile. He rolls a Triskelion, which means that he should place a treasure chest in this tile. Cormac accepts doing this because treasure chests are really what it's all about. However, the interact means that Cormac would place a trap. Less than happy with this, the player decides it would be a good idea to re-roll that. In two-player, none of these results can be re-rolled. However, as is often the case, the re-roll brings up the trap again, and there's no avoiding that fate. So Cormac now searches to see if he can find the trap. If he had committed to any other action, he would trigger the trap, unless it was to drink a potion or to read from a scroll. In this instance, the player is being cautious and doesn't want to trigger the trap if it can be avoided. The difficulty of the test is two, and Cormac has three successes. He is now safe from the trap whilst he's in this tile. Should he leave the tile and return to it, he may not be certain of where that trap is, because memory is not always a precise thing. As a result, he would have to make that test again, if the trap is still live. For now, Cormac is safe and may continue. He might leave the zone, or he might decide to explore. So, the player decides he's going to break the chest open using a combat rather than use his last remaining interact. Cormac needs two successes, and he has five dice in a test of might. His weapons are not going to be of any use here because they're slashing weapons and a piercing weapon. So, he would need a bludgeoning weapon to help him break through the chest. He's failed to break through the chest with the combat action. The player decides to have one more attempt at it. This time successfully breaking into the chest. Since the chest was a randomly generated chest, it doesn't have a stocked item in it, in the narrative. And therefore, it is rolled upon a table using one dice. Cormac has discovered a scroll. And since he used a combat to break into the chest and it was not a potion or a breakable, 
he takes the scroll and has gained a scroll of defence, a very useful item to protect oneself in the dungeons on the other side of midnight. Cormac now has an interact. This chest is broken open and Cormac decides that discretion is sometimes the better part of valour and so he decides to remain in the zone that he is in and bank the interact for the next round. As described in another video, a hero may bank up to four actions. However, if a hero has corruption, for each corruption they may bank one less action. If a hero is at four corruption, trigger events in the dungeon can be quite lethal for that hero, so corruption needs to be managed, much like any other resource. That's all for this video. Thank you for your time. We hope that you've enjoyed it. Bye now.